Hello and welcome back to AMBV. I'm Casper and today I'm going to be assembling and discussing the four post lift behind me. Behind me you can see a new four post lift. This is a pretty cheap lift. I believe it's a Triumph brand off of Amazon. It was about $2,200. Now with any of these cheaper lifts I'm always curious about the quality and overall the quality seems to be pretty good here. The design is pretty simple, so it's hard to get wrong unless you just really skimped out. But while I'm discussing one of the big issues that I ran into with the lift, I wanted to go ahead and show you the time lapse of it being assembled. So now, the only big issue we encountered with the lift is that it came with essentially no instructions. We watched several videos on it, we pulled up supplemental instructions online, we went through just still pictures we found, there was nothing that clearly dictated how this thing should be assembled in the proper process. The supplemental instructions online that we found via this website were far more helpful than any of the others that came with it. The instructions that came with it were basically useless. One of the biggest problems we ran into with it was not having clear instructions about how to orient the parts. These parts are hundreds and hundreds of pounds. You need assistance moving them around and you're banging them up and scratching paint off doing so. So if you knew the proper orientation, you could keep it in a much better state by doing it right the first time. Now, two big things that I will hint toward on this is when you're assembling it, the side of the drive path that has the piston and cables in it goes toward your power and pump unit. So the base of the piston goes toward the power and pump unit the cables run away from it. That should basically be your front left corner if you're looking down it. Now, once you've got that oriented, you can kind of fumble through the rest of it. The orientation of these ramps does matter because they have a lip on the inside where you can set your drip trays. So if you put your second ramp that has nothing inside of it backwards, it would install, but you would have nowhere to hang your drip tray. So that's the general giveaway on which way those are gonna go. Now, when you're installing these crossbars, which is one of the first steps you have to do, you have to get the posts up and then slide it down through the top of them. You could either lay the posts over and try to do that and then stand them up or do it standing. Either way has a lot of problems, but I seem to favor the ladder of standing it up and just putting it down through the top because it seemed to self square pretty well. Another point of clarity, these crossbars have linkages for the brake systems. Nowhere in the instructions does it describe which way to have these oriented, but you need to have the short side toward the piston side of your railing. That is where the Z-bar linkage comes through, connects to the two, and allows them to release. It's the same on both ends except for the other end has a handle. If you don't do that, you need to take them loose and swap them, which isn't a huge deal, but that means you have to take those guards off, you have to take the little nuts off, swap the unit around, tighten it all back up, and then start realigning everything. It can be kind of annoying. Once you get the whole unit attached, you need to loosen up the piston in the center to be able to get enough slack to attach the cables. Now the piston works backwards from what I was expecting. The piston is extended fully when it's on the ground and then closes up as you're lifting the lift up. So instead of pushing out the piston for power, it's actually drawing the piston in for power. Now that kind of was a little strange and I wasn't quite sure how to get the piston extended to get the slack you need to install the cables. You could go about it two ways. If you're leaving the piston mostly pulled in, you could try lifting everything to the top, which is going to be a freaking nightmare because that's almost a thousand pounds or more than a thousand pounds. Or you can go the route we did where we found a supplemental instruction online that told us to use air fittings to assemble a connection to the farthest rear connection to the piston. So in my case, it came pre-installed with a little vent, uh, brass venting on it, but it's the very bottom of the piston back where it mounts. You can attach an air fitting there and use that to push the ram out. That'll give you the slack you need to attach your cables. Then when you're done, Lower everything down to the ground if you can. Just fill it with fluid, pump it a little bit, and then lower it down, and that'll help push all the air out of the system, get it completely flat before the first few times you really use it. You'll want to use the lift a few times, going all the way up and all the way down, 
to make sure you get air out of it before you put weight on it because you need the hydraulic fluid to be able to do its job. Overall, it seems to work pretty darn well. It's obviously not the best quality thing in the world, but for storage, it's gonna work great. And other than thinking that I probably wish it was 220 instead of 110, I don't have a whole lot of complaints about it. The coating has been flaked off in a lot of places during the installation. I'll rattle can some of that, but this is a shop lift and it should work for a shop projects. If you have any questions about this particular lift, leave them in the comments down below. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.